all right, you're building an email app, maybe an email client or even email marketing software, and you need some kind of text editor. So in this video here, I'm using the Frawala text editor. They are today's sponsor, and it can pretty much do anything that you would want. So all of the text formatting that you would expect, text color, background color, you can insert a link. You can allow your users to add attachments with email, like maybe an image, for example. I can just add an image and then just align it however I want. So we'll talk about the most important features for an email app. Now, I actually have a complete tutorial with the Frawala text editor in which we're actually building a page builder. But this is actually also something that you would use if you're building email marketing software. So you allow your users to design email and maybe your users can create templates. I highly recommend you check out that other video. It's all right, let's start from scratch here. Let's say we are building some kind of email widget or feature. The user needs to send it to somebody. So I just have an input for the to and also for the subject of the email. And then we have a button. We're gonna use the Formala text editor for the body of the email, but these components. I'm actually using Shad CN UI. So here, just to show you that I'm using these two inputs and this button, they're coming from Shad CN UI. And maybe without the text editor, you would do it yourself. Maybe you would create a text area and you would try to implement all of those features yourself. That's not what we want to do. We want to use a sophisticated text editor that's been around for a long time, battle tested. And that's why we're going to use Frawala here. Let's install both packages. So I will say npm install Frawala editor as well as React Frawala what you see is what you get. Now Frawala also uses Font Awesome for the icons. So let's actually also install that. I'll just paste it right here as well. So now in between here, we wanna have the Frawala editor component. And it's actually this second uh, import that we wanna do. You can specify what HTML tag it should render in the HTML. Now, if you do this, I'm using Next.js. So first it will actually try to render all of this on the server side. Frawala editor is using the window object. There is no window on the server side. We need to make it a client component component in Next.js. Now, when you do that, it will actually still be rendered on the server at least once. So even client components, a lot of people don't know that, are still rendered on the server side at least once. So if you want to make sure the component only renders on the client, we have to import it dynamically. So we can say dynamic. So it will look something like this. So here we will have a promise that all for all the imports that we want to import dynamically. So here it's just going to be that React Frawala package. But the way that Frawala works is with plugins. So for every feature, you have a separate plugin. This is why it's so lightweight, because by default, it doesn't come with a lot of bloated features that you're not going to use. You have to explicitly import the plugins that you're going to use. Now for this tutorial, I will actually just import everything so we can easily explore all of the different features. And right, so here I then get this Frawala editor component, and that's what we're then going to use here. So make sure you use this same name. By the way, we also need to specify server side rendering should be false. So it's not going to render ever on the server, only on the client. Then I actually can also remove this import. So we also need to add the CSS. I can just import the CSS like this. Now, if you go back, we already have a pretty decent looking text editor right here. And right? so since I'm importing all the plugins here, it, it will actually enable all of them here. All right. So let's say we want to customize a little bit. Maybe we actually do want to remove the characters. Maybe we want to make it a little bit taller. Let's actually start there. Let's make it a little bit bigger in height. So pretty Pretty much all customization will happen with this convic prop. It's just going to be an object. And what we could do, for example, is we can say the height should be at least 150 pixels. So if I do this and go back, you can see it's a little bit taller. And by default, it will say something like type something. So that's basically placeholder text. We can say compose an email, right? This sounds a little bit more elegant. So now you can see we have that. Let's say we actually do not want to keep track of the characters or words. We actually want to remove that. By default, those are actually plugins. And since I'm importing all the plugins, they are automatically enabled. You can just say character counter count is false as well as the counter count is false. Now, if I go back, you can see it's gone. Now, maybe we also don't want to have this quick insert, right? So users can then easily insert images and videos and tables, quick insert enabled, just set it to false. And maybe we also want to determine the actual buttons here in the toolbar. By default, we have these buttons and they are arranged in a certain order. They actually have a great tutorial on the website as well about customizing the editor for an email experience. So they actually recommend using these toolbar buttons if you have some kind of email client. You can find that if you search for for a while email on their website. And then when you come back, you will see something like this, right? So this is more like a traditional email toolbar. So I get full screen capabilities. I can even download as PDF, print. Then we have the basic text formatting options. I can insert an image. I can insert a link. And the toolbar right now is sitting on top here. Now you may actually want to go a little bit more advanced. You can actually also make the toolbar 
inline. So we could also say toolbar inline should be true. In that case, we now have something like this, which actually looks really clean. And now when I type here and now I select something is when the toolbar pops up. And if the users really need to be able to design emails, this is probably what you want. So now it's not inline, it's always present. All right, so now a user can type something as an email, right? But eventually users probably want to try adding attachments like PDF files or images. So here users can, for example, insert an image by URL, browse, upload an image. Let's say I'm going to upload my thumbnail from one of my other videos. And then we have it right here. Now, with e now when you send images over email, the images often will be blocked actually by email clients. So with images, it's really important that the images have alt text. So user, you want to make sure your users actually are able of adding alt text and also a caption, right? So basically like a short description of the image. You also want to make sure the image has the height and width attributes set. So we can say image output size should be set to true. Right, let me actually set some alt text here as well. I will say test and I will align it to the left here. Now, how do I know that the alt text, for example, is actually applied here? But how do we get the complete HTML of the email that the user has written here, including the image? Because eventually, of course, we need to be able to grab the HTML from here because then you actually need to send it to some other email clients in case you're sending email right, over SMTP. Right? You're going to have to grab the HTML from whatever the user has has written here, you're going to have to actually be able to get that in some way. So here you can do it with the model. So we can make it a controlled component. We can just add some new state here. We can say email HTML and it's just going to be a string. I'll import new state here. Now then here for model, that's going to be email HTML. And then here for the setter, we have on model change. So now email HTML will hold the actual well HTML of that text area. So if I add the console log here, now if I open up my console here and if I actually type something test test you can see we get some html output here not instantly so only after you stop typing for a little bit because that's better for performance but you can see this is how we would get the actual html so if i insert an image again you can see now we have the html with an image align it to the left so it's, ju it's just going to use style attribute which is probably better for email client if i add alt text here youtube thumbnail what do we get we actually get alt here in the html as well and it's using paragraph tags here you can also remove that and instead you may want to have div All right completely custom Customizable. Now, by the way, about these settings here, so I don't like to add the settings what we did here because it clutters up the JSX quite a bit. So it's actually easier to just add the config information to outside the component. I will just say Frovala config and that will just be this object. Copilot already helping me out here. So I can just replace all of this with just Frovala config. So now we have the config defined up here. Now to actually type this with TypeScript, we can say that this needs to be Frovala options, right? So if you want to see all of the options you can specify, you can Google for Wala options. You'll see a huge list of options you have. We only want to be able to specify options here that are, of course, actually available, right? So if I type gibberish right now, we should get a warning so that we're not accidentally making mistakes. But now it's not properly typed here. So we can do this by using for Wala options. I can import this from the for Wala editor package, right? not the React bindings, just the normal one. We're not going to use all of them. So this needs to be a partial, right? So just a subset of that. Now, if I add some gibberish, we get a warning, right? So now we can fix our mistake. By default, actually, you may not get a warning. So you may actually need to open this up. So if I go to command, click on this, go to the actual Frawala options here. If I go down all the way here, it actually has included key any. So you can comment this out so it will actually work. And with the images, by the way, you can see it's a blob, binary large object, and it's just something local here. So if you're actually going to send this email and the user is just uploading from the local file system, you do need to make sure that it's, that it's actually uploaded to the cloud somewhere and that you're using an absolute URL. So how do you know when the user uploads something? Well, there are events happening. If you want to see all the events, you can Google for Frawala events. And one of the events is, for example, image inserted. For all of them, we just use one key here, event. And here I can listen for, for example, image. And it will actually give me a reference to the image in the HTML. So then I could get it sourced and then I could make sure I, I grab the blob and uh, upload it somewhere. All right, now a little bit more about text. We can also change the font family, but by default, only a limited set of font families are available because if you're sending emails you want to make sure that the font family is actually already installed on the user's computer and there's just a limited set so like Arial and Ferdana Times New Roman you probably don't want to customize this now here we have font size by default you actually have a very wide range and for emails probably it's better to have a minimum of 12 
12 or 14. So if I want to customize this, I just say font size says actually font size singular. And here I can specify everything I want. So let's say it should be at a minimum 14 pixels. So if I do this, it's at least 14 pixels. And we can actually be a little bit more advanced. Fraud actually has a great example of this in their email tutorial. But you can have some default options here, like unsubscribe from this list, view the email in browser, and then you can manually replace it with some of your own code to get the actual correct URL. Now here, when I go back to this, here you can see we had we have those default options, right? So email clients don't support all features that you want to do. You want to be careful with the actual features that you enable. And once you're happy with a setup, you would grab the HTML from all of this, like we saw before. You would use the model prop for this, right? So here, email HTML, you would send it to your backend, and then you can use SMTP to actually send the HTML, right? So I highly recommend that if you're building an actual email design software, that you also check out my other tutorial with Frawala. I want to thank Frawala for sponsoring this video, and I want to thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.